Hi guys, this is Allison from Alley Cat Creations. How are you? Please share and subscribe if you have yet to do so. And if you get anything from my work, a connected on an epiphany and mind blown moment, a new book to read, a new author to explore, oracle cards, these cool little gem skulls. I'm going to be hopefully working on my <clears throat> website um, this weekend, getting some stuff up that I said I was going to, and then life just happens. Life happens. So if you are interested in any of this, alleycatcreations com, all the links, how you can get in touch with me and see all the things that I post, very spiritual stuff. I try to stick with that constantly because I think we need to seed humanity. <clears throat> please, please just chill. Go down there and look at the links if you're interested in any of that. Hi. <laughs> Holy crap. <sighs> um, last two nights have been banana nuts for me. Um, we had a <clears throat> allergies, number one, is something I'm battling. Um, I saved a bit of dandelion from last season. It's still sort of good. So I make like fruit smoothies in the morning. Uh, the fruit's getting, the selection in the store is getting better. Um, the farmer's market over here is not open just yet. It's soon. I can't wait. I like going to the farms around here and picking at their veggies and their fruits than the grocery store. But you got to do with what you have, right? So the fruit selection is a little better to, uh, and I got some fruit. And I make these smoothies and I infuse tea and I put dandelion and drink it. It's good, but it takes some time for my body to get used to all these allergens. Anywho, spiritual soul advice. Hi. Thank you all for supporting me. I know I've been growing my numbers here. You've been seeing me on shows. Unfortunately, today I'm supposed to be on with Jack. Lander on Jack breaks out, but Jack hasn't slept in two days. He needs sleep. So we're going to reschedule what I did last Friday was a really good episode. Um, <clears throat> we'll reschedule. No biggie. And last night I was on Turn the Page with Janine. Um, that was a fantastic conversation. I will be on her show and a roundtable with Brother Buckshot tomorrow night i don't know she's gonna have the other wonderful lady marcia on but she was a lovely lady and we all have to understand that perspectives and paradigms are all very different and we all interpret we all perceive and interpret this reality differently so hold space because i got some messages it's okay Everybody's entitled to their interpretation and their perception of reality, and that includes dreams, and that includes things that are not of our world. I live more in the other, in the higher dimensionalities. Um, I am grounded to earth, but I'm, my soul is more than, this is home. For now, this is home, but a lot of us are not from Earth or incarnated to be from Earth this life cycle. Um, earlier this morning, um, you know, waiting to see if Jack was going to get in touch with me, I got to watch somebody who I've been watching, um, not on a regular basis, but somebody I kind of very highly respect. And that's Decode Your Reality by uh, with Logan. He used to work, or maybe still works with uh, Santo Spinacci. And he did an excellent decode on Jason Brashear's Archaics. He kind of 
taught, he kind of says the same thing that I do, but I say it in different wording. He has a lot of tangible, well, tangible to us to see in the here and the now. He's using Chaldean numerology. He's using um, the elements from the periodic table. He's using um, tarot cards, but also playing cards. He's using a whole slew of things. And a lot of his decodes are fantastic. Please go support him. Um, I hope one day to, you know, let's manifest it, get on a show with him just, just because he's super fascinating. And I believe everything he is saying is, I tell you guys, we wrote this. He's proving it to you. <laughs> he's he's just a, a, a wealth of information. It's just another perception of a lot of the things that I say here. Um, again, if you don't believe in any of that stuff, that's okay. You have to go into your heart to know what's right for you. And what's right for me might not be right for you, but just have it expanded. You know, I'm always watching and listening to other people to hear their perceptions and interpretations. Do I have to agree with any of that? No, but it's beautiful because they might say something that might connect the dot for me or might give me an epiphany or might connect something that has no relevance to what they were saying, but it connects me to something else. So I want everybody to say and hear, listen to other people, but don't have an emotional attachment to it. We, he, even in this one episode, which is why I'm going to probably see if I can find the link and put it in the description for you to see it for yourself. He talks about the scripted reality. He went over Jason Bashir's with Archaics and it was fantastic. Both of them are living their missions. I know that I'm living my mission, um, many of us are living our missions without even us recognizing it um he did say he stopped feeding energy to things that are outside of himself that will steer him in feeding negative energy he didn't say it just quite like that i'm not quoting him but in essence, that's really what he's saying is he stopped focusing on things that will suck his energy dry like a vampire and that he's focused inwardly. He's focused on his mission. I'm focusing on my mission. I've been doing it. I am now stepping forward. More and more people are finding my voice, my words. I would hope that this would happen one day. But if it didn't, I would still do what I'm doing now. You know. But go watch that episode. There's a lot of things you can pluck from there that there's a lot of co uh, parallels, <clears throat> correlations that you can make for the things that I say, that he says. And once you realize that you wrote your script, this is a movie that you wrote all your hot, all your timelines have been written because you wrote them. It's just a matter of remembering what they are. It's a matter of understanding how the game is being played. And when you are an active participant in your own life, instead of being sitting back and letting everything else dictate for you outside sources, how to feel and what to think and where to steer your thinking, once you can control that, and do you and be the best version of you, life starts changing and shifting. It starts with that mirror. It starts with the self-love and standing in your empowerment. All the other pieces will fall into place. Like I was saying on Janine last night, I let go of so many things. The one thing I truly ever did, there was only two things while my mother was alive that I ever really truly wanted. Cause she, she was really wanting me to find another person knowing that I have arthritis that was going to step in to help me. Cause she knew my family couldn't do that role that I would have nobody. If God forbid she left, 
she wanted me to be secure. So she wanted me to find a nice guy and she wanted for me and I wanted for myself to find my birth family because at that point in time, we had no idea why I was sick. If it was outside, uh, uh, you know, genetically what was going to go on, we're all, you know, we're all concerned about a lot of those things that are inherited. And for her, she got me the birth family first because six months after she passed away, I got, you know, your thoughts are not yours. I got upstairs channeling through me. Hey, you got to do 23 me. You got a birthday coming up. Let's see if he can get a deal. And I got a deal and did 23 and me. Found my, my birth family. I found my truth. It's not a pretty one. My truth is not pretty. It's tragic. It's traumatic. But I chose it because I needed the set, those sets of circumstances to overcome. To not only break the ancestral karma and cycles that no longer will serve my soul moving forward. And my adoptive family. I was the black sheep. Gotta love that. But we come in with purpose. We serve purposes and there are multiple purposes you serve. We we all have to take into consideration. We all came here with a story. We all came here and we chose what we were going to be. It's now aligning yourself with that truth. It's understanding the deeper lessons that you perhaps, you know, you're, pull, you're pulling your hair out of your head. Like, what does this mean? Don't think so hard. Let it come to you. We're so, you know, a lot of us, we're human and we're, we've been groomed. I hate to use that word, but it's kind of the way I feel about technology. We've been groomed to get instant gratification, to get your answer solved in a snap, to go on a search engine and find your answers. We have been groomed to not have patience. I had to learn the hard way, suffer through it, what patience really meant. I was so rushed to get out and move over the summer because I knew what the winters here were going to be like. And you know what? The universe is like, ha ha, here's your test, honey. You're going to get moved over the winter. Great, thanks. It wasn't easy, but I had to let go of a lot of expectations of what things looked like. I had to have patience because everything needed its divine order. We don't dictate what that is. We wrote it, but we really in this life don't get to dictate too much. Um, besides your bodily fluids and your hormones and what you put in your body, those are kind of choices. I am very slow on reading this book. Once again, that book took me a little bit to read because holy shit. Holy shit. I still recommend this book. For all the new people on my channel, please, Reconstructing Reality by Suzanne Lai. I do a book review. This is game-changing. This is the first book you should read. This goes in, um, you, it gives you a better understanding of the story that's happening here. Um, but again, I'm finding myself dropping jaw a lot of the things I'm reading, I'm like, uh -huh. but because it's validating me completely. Quote, it was hoped that the other polarity of self that lived in the higher dimensions 
could serve as an inner guide or conscience. Although most of the people were totally unaware of the higher aspects of themselves, a component of their souls could still remain pure in the high dimensions. This other half or divine complement could then assist them to be receptive at times, such as during sleep, crisis, or upon death. Those, were, those who were able to study in the temple's mystery schools can learn how to regain communication with their divine complement, and in so doing, create constant inner guidance, companionship, and comfort. That last part, sure, but that first part, it was hoped that the other polarity of self that lived in the higher dimensions could serve as an inner guide or conscience. Your higher self. Which, when I read that, it then totally made sense to me. Um, I worked in a school where all the women would get pregnant at once or in, in a matter of secession. And everybody would come to me and ask me what the birth, what the sex of their child was. And when I tuned in, I didn't understand when I first started being asked that the soul coming in is one gender, but the guide is the other gender. So once I figured that out, like this gave me the confirmation of that. Um, a female fetus with the female soul will have a male guide. That's their divine complement. Opposite for boys, the boys will have a female guide guiding them in. You're not always tethered inside the fetus. You go up and down and up and down and get affiliated and integrated into the little tiny little thing that's growing in a woman's belly. And my goodness, after I realized that, I was getting it a little wrong for some people, but then all of a sudden I figured that out, read the energy, and boom. I really haven't been too far off. It's been cool to do that. I don't really have many anybody pregnant around me anymore. But, you know, at the time, I didn't realize what that meant. Why Why would the opposite sex guide come down? I, I didn't understand it. And this kind of answered that question for me. So see how long I had to wait? to make sense of something that I kind of understood the concept of. Like, oh, okay, so the, uh, but I didn't have the real true in-depth of reading and understanding of why when a female is being born in the, the female body that a male guide is coming down. That answers it for me, their divine complement, which is your other aspect. So you individuated at a source you in whatever you whatever physical vehicle you're playing you could be a male or female you're playing one aspect of yourself one even though we have both masculine and feminine energies within our being we're dualistic the actual male essence that is why i have a lot more masculine guides I do have a lot of female as well, but the the the, gen, the generals, the war guys, they're guys, they're, 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 they're bishops. That's all me. And if you really think and look back at why a lot of people feel that they can't find their other selves or their, their soulmate, is because some of us are not meant to actually find our other half, our other parts of ourselves in this life. And don't get upset because you're going to reunite with your other self, your, your masculine aspect, or if you're a male, your feminine aspect, when you ascend, 
you're going to merge back with that aspect of yourself. Um, so merging, meaning like your light bodies are going to intertwine, it's going to become one. So you're going to merge with your other self. A lot of us are integrating those other selves, the other aspects of ourselves right now. That's why we're tired. I'm exhausted today. Um, a lot of us are integrating a lot of information right now. We don't know where to put it. We don't know what to, what sticks, what makes sense. Just be patient. I wanted to get these books out. I'm still reading this and it's like freaking mind blowing. And I want that epiphany and mind blown moment to happen for other people. You might not even read it and get anything out of it right now, but once you get get to that level of awareness of your other selves, of your higher self, of your oversoul, and all the layers in between, this book is going to make a complete, absolute sense to you, even if it is fictitious with truth. I, you know, the stories that are written in here are not necessarily ones I claim, but I can just stick myself in past lives that I've had and take the lessons that were given in the book. Like the story that's happening in here, I can completely correlate myself with the being being written about, which is the same one in here. It's just a little different. I want to see if there's any other. Yeah, that's one. <laughs> so <clears throat> a lot of us have been shielded, cloaked because of who and what we are and what paradigm we come from. I know for myself, I have been hidden. I've been tucked away to be saved, to be safe, and that they need me and they know how much of a value that I am. And that doesn't just mean me. That means a lot of you too. Um, once again, when you're fighting the upper dimensional battles, a lot of people going through that and a lot of people are starting to experience it or remembering it. You're tended to be like a mute point in society. I've always blended in, even though I stand out really loud. I've never had, you know, opportunities. And I wrote that, but it was wrote it was written in my in my contract or my assignment to keep me safe. And I never really understood why a lot of things haven't happened for me, why I bust my butt super hard for hours and years on end to try to get something to click and nothing ever clicks for me. And that's because I had to learn that I had to keep a low profile. Now that the war is still being fought and it's gonna be won by the light, but we, we gotta do the work for it. it we're starting to see people like me have a, a have a little bit more of a voice you know i i don't need popularity i don't need a million views i don't i just want to sustain my life um i want to be content i just want to be able to pay bills and until this 3d uh nightmare ends um i got to play the game just like everybody else um but i'm not here to scam or outdo anybody um you know, I'm being channeled. Sorry, guys. And there's high power energy coming through me. <laughs> uh, water. So I don't have coffee or tea today. Um, 
just water. To being protected, because I'm going to read something. I'll read this and then I'll go into my thought. If the wrong people found out who they were, it could mean their lives. I was moved for a reason. The things and the events that triggered my move from Staten Island to Indiana was not it's a huge test, number one, for me. Uh, a major change in my life, major uplifting of everything that I thought was my best and highest was not in my best and highest. There were entities that were going to take me out and they have tried in, uh, you know, worldly ways. Um, but I had to go. There's a lot of us who are in that similar situation that we've been hidden. We haven't found our purposes. We haven't been success, you know, what society deems as successful, what your family deems as successful. All of these paradigms that we have grown up with, we've been indoctrinated and programmed with that, you know, in order to be successful, you need X, Y, and Z. In order to be substantial in the world you need a 50 million degrees and certificates and you know even if you don't have any of them like you have no chance of getting a good job and providing for yourself and we got to rip that paradigm in in half you know everybody's looking to sue everybody's looking for for to get one over on somebody it's not the energy i want to feed and it's not something i align myself with but on a scarier basis, the higher dimensions have been trying to take many of us out. And I know there are people who had the best intentions. And we know when we're being asked is, you know, be careful who you watch. It's probably because that's not really that person that you're really watching. I've noticed a lot of people that don't look the same. Like, if you go back two years ago to my channel, yeah, I had more makeup and stuff, but I also was emaciated. I I, I was like between 197 pounds at that point doing the videos. I was angry. I was frustrated. <laughs> and a lot of my videos, it just that, my energy was so scattered and their survival mode was so intact. And it's not that I lived in fear because I knew the universe had my back and I knew things are going to turn out okay. It's just living in the moment and the pain in my stomach and, and the pain that my body was giving me, it wasn't pleasant. But things worked out. You know, and I'm in that mode right now, again, it, it feels that way, but I, I'm trusting in the universe. Um, I'm going on a job interview, not like it's a fair kind of thing. I don't know how they run things here, but, you know, they emailed me, hey, we really would love to have you come to the job fair on Monday. Um, I, I got, I got one of my certificates. I have to find a test score thingy that I did um years years ago eight nine years ago I don't even know if I have it um but just going there with an open mind and an open heart and hope that something happens and falls through for me but if not like something else I hope will, door whatever door is supposed to open I hope opens and I want to inspire you that are at home you're being redirected for a reason. We might not know what that reason is. We might have to sit and be patient. Just be mindful. You're still bound by third dimensional laws and constructs. Where no one's above or below the construct of the game. As much as I would love to be a millionaire, it ain't happening. And not that I'm going to spend my money on fruitless shit. I would never do that. Um, but I would like to see prosperity. I would like, there's so many things. And a lot of us are aligning with the same stuff, but when we're asked to watch who, you know, be reminded about the energy that we're distributing to other people, 
the people that we watch, the people that we put faith into, only put faith in yourself. Know what your heart is saying. There's too, there's too many people that are staring you in the wrong direction. And you're, it's not, let me rephrase that. There is no wrong or right. It's up to you to come into the awareness to see the agenda. There's a lot of agendas being played out right now. You know, everybody's like rushing to tell me what to do with my money. The what I had, you know, once I sold my house, I'll go get take everything out of the bank, Allison. Do this and do that. If I listened to everybody, I would be homeless. I made executive decisions when I listened to myself and stopped listening to other people. And of course, other people's opinions and inputs were were very helpful when it came to stuff about moving companies and where to put my stuff in storage. Like what, what is most convenient? Like what's a really good hotel that I can leave my animals in and know that everything will be okay with them if I have to leave to go sh food shopping or out? looking at houses, can't take my, my, you know, cats with me. What hotel is best suited for this? And that's great advice, right? No one was telling me though, who to watch, what to listen to. Cause I had to figure that out for myself. A lot of us have been under attack from the negative entities. I know I have my whole life. And I put my foot down and I finally said, F you, <laughs> you're not taking my, I'm not feeding you freely my energy anymore. You tend to stop having attacks. They're going to try. They've been trying, but they tend to stop their BS with you because you're not feeding them. They get tired. They're like, okay, she's not giving me that energy, not giving me the loosh. I'm going to move on now. Be aware of that. Listen to people objectively. Making accusations and gossiping about that. Like, oh my God, this person did this and this person did that. And does this affect your daily life? Are they paying your bills? Are they feeding you? If not, take what people say with a grain of salt until you go into your heart space and align with it. Does this feel right? If you know how to do muscle testing, does this feel right? Go in your heart. If it doesn't seem right, or it seems off, or it seems weird, or it seems like there's an agenda at foot being played here, um, somebody that Jason used to go on um, that I, I, I still talk to here and there, I had a big time person on that said, now things aren't really going to happen the way you think it's going to happen. It's probably not going to happen at all. And everybody's sitting there like, oh my God. Well, what have I been trying to tell you on my channel is to manifest it for yourself. You don't need a government handout. Yeah, they sold from us. Yes, it's completely wrong. And I completely would love a refund of all the money they stole from me when my mother died. Completely. People thought I I, I was going to be set for life. No, that's not how life works. And I wasn't set for life. Even with the sale of my house, I wasn't set for life. You don't realize how much things literally cost and all the little behind the scenes bullshit that they pull. Yeah, I would love all of that returned to me. But you know what? I'm still here manifesting my reality, not worried about that. That's like a bonus lottery ticket. If it comes to me, great. If it doesn't, great. I still have to live my everyday life. I still have to take care of me. I still have to put food on my table. I still have to take care of me at the end of the day. And I hope a lot of you are in that mindset as well. Take care of your yourself first. 
And it's not being selfish. That's being practical. You can't, you're going to run around, you're going to run yourself dry and have your cup empty because you're giving your energy away freely. Don't do it. And just be careful who you're listening to. And if you're listening to people, do it objectively. Don't have an emotional tie, attachment. Yeah, you could like somebody. Listen, Jason is like a brother to me, but I don't agree with a lot that he says. It doesn't mean that I don't respect the things that he says. It doesn't mean that I trash everything he says. It means I'm taking what fits with me in my heart and the rest I just let go. It's it's not a disrespect to him. It's just he makes brilliant and amazing connect the dots and not all those connect the dots are for me they might be for other people that's why he's still very brilliant i know there's a lot of people that poo poo him and say horrible things about him but he's he serves a high purpose so does jack and so many other people it's just finding where that purpose lies that's all. I know I'm I'm being channeled from a lot of different things, a lot of parts of my higher self. So I do apologize. I'm like I'm gonna skip that one. <laughs> That one's going to take, some of this takes a lot of explanation and I don't want to do that. I'll do that during the book review. Here's a good one that we could focus on. The lower astral plane being the lowest residence of the fourth dimension, being the lowest resonance of the fourth dimension astral plane go back to the realms of the living dead that i read by the curtises it goes into that like spectacularly it is amazing that book is bon appetit on spirit was filled with fear and anger of the newly dead who are unable to connect with their spirit guides or higher dimensionals higher dimensions of themselves before or during death. This is why I keep explaining to people, okay, not all spirit is evil. A lot of entities are just lost. They're stuck here because they're attached to something here. Or someone is grieving so hard that they don't feel like it's right for them to ascend or go up to heal. And they stay here because of someone else's emotions. There's so many different facts, facets, sorry, couldn't get that out for a minute, of why a spirit would want to stay here or sometimes they're trapped here. This is why there are mediums and people who can help them go back to source and their higher selves. But this is the energy that we feed. This is where a lot of the draconian and the other aliens of the negative polarity are dwelling. They're in fourth dimension. So they're a little above us. They're still able to be here. And this is how they feed. still god's creation we wrote them into this story you're here to wake us up but you have the power to stop feeding them the less you feed them the less they're going to bother you and they won't be around anymore because you're not feeding them they might come to attack i mean i still get attacked here and there but it's not 
I'm protecting myself. I know how to. I, there's many modalities to protect. I do video like two years ago on like all the ways like I have sage and I salt and you know, I have a video on that back in the day. But we got to realize that these are the energies that we're going to be moving into. And this is where the, the eclipse cycle is really going to test a lot of us. And this is where the where the full moon is. It's it's we're moving into change and new beginnings. If anybody knows the tower moment in the tarot, this is a humongous humanitarian humanity at a large tower moment with a death card coming in right after it as the rebirth a lot of us are rebirthing into our new selves it doesn't mean you're going to look different death the death card doesn't mean death it means renewal it means rebirth it means the old has to go in order for the new to come in and we're still watching on the outside manifested world, a world crumbling before our eyes. But that change still has to happen. And we're watching it slowly roll out. We have to be patient. The only way things are going to go faster is if more of us start really going in and doing the praying, the affirmations, or the work to just set the intention of harmony and peace on earth. The outwardly changes that will play out and that are going to be incoming are going to happen regardless. How are you going to react to them? Are you going to be in a state of fear? Oh my God. I, 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 I didn't, I didn't pack enough toilet paper. Get creative during I was like cutting up old clothes. I'm like, well, if it comes down to this, what am I going to do? How do they do things back when? Okay, I might have to just cut up some shirts and use that for toilet paper, right? But you get inventive and you start being creative with your mind. We have to stop fearing things that people say and then they don't come and then we persecute them. But then you were the sucker for listening to them and not going here in the first place. Stop being the one being led astray. This is the things that I am seeing in society right now. It doesn't matter what, what you're watching, what show, what part of the circus act you're watching. It is happening. Stop feeding it. I'm not going to ever stop saying that. You wrote your story. How does it end? Be honest with yourself. How does it end? Sorry, I had a pause. But in that pause, I found something very unique and interesting. It's uh, from Atomogenesis Balance. Find balance in your life between good and the bad. Balance between whom we wish to be and whom we need to be. Balance between masculine and feminine energies. If you take a step back, you will see everything is in perfect balance just as it should be. Balance is about being kind but not letting people abuse you. Trust, but don't be deceived. Be content. But never stop improving yourself. Work hard, but don't let work take over your life. Don't lose yourself. Find the balance between holding on and letting go. Create inner balance. And this is what a lot of us have been trying to do and striving to do in the you know last couple of years or maybe a lifetime. That's up to you to decide how that fits for you. 
but I talk about this a lot. We got to let go of the old self that is no longer serving us, the trauma, the old ways of being. We've all come so far in our awareness. We're matured. I know from videos I did a year ago how much growth I have gained. And I took all the good aspects of myself and I applied them, absorbed it, understood it, comprehended it, and embraced it. And now I exude it. It's a process. Once you really understand yourself, how you operate, you give yourself compassion. You're like, okay, so I, I'm a hot, you know, you could say, you know, I hear, I hear many people say they're hot headed. Little things just, it's instantaneous trigger that, <clears throat> right? You get frustrated. It's human to get frustrated. But when you can control that reaction to ask yourself, why am I reacting that way? The first step into that maturity and that higher awareness is asking yourself, why am I frustrated? What is this that is making me frustrated? And how can I react to it healthier? Or a little differently. I have my nice throw, my Halloween throw, because it's cold. It's a cold snap again. False spring is here. It's still winter, but it was like 70 the other day, and today it's like 40. Yikes. Um, we do need that balance. Are you balanced? Are you balancing your energy? Are you grounding? These are only things you can answer for yourself, but very important. The, the eclipse is going to happen in March, the 25th on a full moon. That's gonna illuminate a lot. It's gonna open up a very big portal and that portal is going to last for a long time. That energy is going to sit. And then it's going to be compounded by the solar eclipse that's coming in on April 8th. That is going to be the transforming light energy, radiant light energy. That's going to, you're just going to shift your consciousness. For some, it's going to be slow rollout. For many of us, it's going to be an instantaneous. It's not going to happen too much in the snaps, but things are going to come a little quicker to you. You're going to start making sense out of things. You're going to start fighting yourself a little bit more. Your abilities, don't be afraid of them. You wrote those in, and when they were going to become online, if you listen to Logan, or his name is Jason, on Decode Your Reality, you wrote your script. I say this all the time. It's when you wrote in when your purpose was going to be walked. And there's many purposes that you hold. So don't think there's the one and done. I don't like saying that you only have one purpose here on earth. We have many purposes. Many of us are just holding the frequency and the light for humanity. That in itself is a ridiculously hard job. That's not easy. Dolores Cannon, you read her books. The, the, the concept is not one of the easiest things to hold that that's your one and only done purpose. No, it's not. It's a heavy one. It's a very difficult one to hold space and to hold the light for humanity. She is Louise. It's a very important job, even if you're, it just means you are just being. It's still a very important job. But goodness sakes, you have more than one. You have lots of missions and quests. Here's how lo I love how spirit syncs with me because I opened up to the exact page I needed it to. Quote, you came to earth to clear the darkness and replace it with light. 
Explain the voice in the now radiant light. I don't fucking make this shit up. Here's a book that just validated everything I had to say. However, first you had to understand the nature of darkness. When you were on Venus, you lived in a state of unity and joy. Until you came to third dimensional Earth, you had not experienced separation from the oneness. When you experienced the separation, you felt fear, sadness, and anger for the first time. In order for you to complete your mission on Earth, you must learn to understand and become master of these emotions. Then you can release the illusion of separation by remembering your true nature. If you can master your pain, even to release your darkness into my light, you can assist in releasing the darkness of the planet as well. There is a portion of us that is insecure and afraid. Your consciousness is now limited to that portion. You can expand your consciousness to encompass the portion that I am. How do I do that? I have tried and tried. You do not need to try to achieve that which is and has always been yours. All you need to do is remember. As if I wrote this book. It's not about the awakening. It's about remembering of who you are in a total sense of a third dimensional perception. The only, you're not going to know it all. No one's ever going to know it all until you merge back with the one. Whether it be the computer of source, the source code, whatever that is for you, when you get back into that energy, There, there, here, tangible evidence, even though it's a book and not all books have the right information in it, but I'm telling you what, I've been saying this for years on this channel. I've been saying this, you have to remember. And you got to give yourself patience with that work. Stop giving your energy to everything besides yourself start with yourself first i'm already seeing on on social media oh but this one's bad and this one's good and this one has a this and this one is a that blah 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 why are you rent why are these people renting space in your head is way beyond me Stop allowing people that are not doing a damn thing for you to rent space in your mind. That's feeding them energy. Align with people, places, and things, but don't attach your energy to it. Because I'm telling you right now, you're going to see a lot of people have that <laughs> moment that you saw that keeps getting played as a meme on, on the certain person, 45's channels, right? Like that's, I was in New York and I saw a lot more worse than that during that election. But if you, you don't want to be that person, do you? When you find out that your favorite person is. Detach your emotions. Stop feeding things. That are just tests from source. These people are here to wake us up. They're playing a role. It's a movie. They're scripted. 
It's all scripted because we have assignments. We're all playing roles. We're all on sources, grand stage. We're on the chess match, whatever you want to see the board, the board, the stage, the theater, whatever you want to see it as. This is how God source is experience it, experiencing itself through all of us in all possible potentialities. So these evil people were the really the reasons why a lot of us started breaking this spell. Coming out of slumber. Understanding the real horrific wrongs that are going on in the world. But we can't necessarily focus on that for too much longer because we got a future to create. We got to manifest something better for ourselves. We're, we're going to be stuck manifesting their reality for them until you get it. Let's wake up and remember who we are and how powerful we are as empowered beings. Stand in your authority. Don't be narcissistic about it. I'm still human, you know, and not to disrespect anybody about their, you know, social media names or anything. I go by Alley Cat. I don't have some fanciful uh, description of who I am. Alley Cat Creations, this is my 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 creations. I I don't have some you know guru quantum spectacular name. I wasn't given a name by anybody besides my higher self. I still don't know that name either. They're not giving it to me yet. But that's a journey I'm still on. But I am the raw, authentic self that I am, and I don't apologize for it and never have. I grew up very different, and I embrace that different. I don't want to be like everybody else. How boring is that? The day that really cemented for me, I was in, I want to say it was either junior high school or high school and Old Navy came out with these like fleece jackets. And the the day after Christmas vacation, almost everybody, when you walked in, you know, in the morning and, and we all had to go to the lunchroom and, until the bell rang, I can tell you, I was one of like two other people that did not have an Old Navy fleece on. Every It was a sea of different colors, but everybody was in an Old Navy fleece. Like it was the coolest thing in the world and you it sucked for you if you didn't have one. No, why do I want to look like you and look like everybody else? Th that makes me crazy. That drives me nuts. I don't want to look like anybody else. I want to be my unique self. And, and that really set the standards for me. <laughs> not in the best ways possible, but it, it set a precedent for me to not be like every, I can still go to the store that everybody else shops in and find things that are, I can, I can look unique in. That when someone else wears it, it's not going to look, it's going to look different on them than it does on me. And I try and Probably since that point on, I have mastered that skill. Where is your authentic self? How would you want to express your authentic self? I'm going to tell the ladies out there, I. <laughs> this is really funny. This is real life. Um, you know, my boyfriend has hit some diff very difficult times in his life and um he goes to discount stores and, and bargain stores and stuff and i go along with him it, it, you never know what you're going to find anyway at these places and we happen to go to this place uh it just opened up it's almost around the corner for me it's up and around but it's a bin store. So they have these big bins and they just throw, we have an Amazon, um, what is those places called? <laughs> we have Amazon here. Uh, I know Staten Island had Amazon or it, also very close to me. This is a little on the opposite side of me, but 
we have Amazon here. So all the unclaimed packages and people return things because they don't need them anymore, but they're open. They kind of, these this these people buy the everything in bulk and then put them in bins. And then it's very highly discounted. So I go with him the other night with the girls and I did good for myself. I got a 40 dollar grounding mat for a dollar because I bought grounding mats when I first moved in here that was one of the first things it was cold and I didn't want to go outside but I needed to anchor my energy here so I bought a grounding mat the thing was forty dollars I found the same exact one for a dollar I found three really interesting books for a dollar and all those like floral long, uh, I forgot what those are called off the top of my head, but a lot of that stuff were in boxes. That's about 18 to $25 for a little box for those. I got it for a dollar. But in the middle of doing this, um, they had mattresses, so my boyfriend was looking at for the girls' new mattresses and just looking. And I, uh, uh, one of the the workers, came over. She goes, "Girl, I love your hair." I'm like, "Thank you. It's natural." She's like, "No." I said, "Yes." This is free. I don't go to the store. I don't do anything. I just wash it with base shampoo. She goes, holy crap. Wow. I don't believe you. But I'm like, you can see it in my roots, honey. This is a whole gray. Do you know how hard it this was? to embrace, I was somebody with dark brown to black hair. I loved my black hair, loved my black hair. I loved that I was able to dye my hair all kinds of different crazy colors. I had purple hair, that was my one of my favorite blends. Purple, like plum purple. I loved it. My mom is actually loving it too because she's very, she was very conservative and she didn't want me pierced. And I have tattoos as well, but they're height, they're hidden. And, you know, I gauged my ears out and she couldn't do anything about it once she figured it out. But she still accepted me for who I was. But this took me for ever to convince myself that dyeing my hair is very dangerous and that wasn't with bleach it was just regular hair to cover the gray and then when i became allergic to bleach my doctor highly suggested to you know find somebody that's good bleach my hair out and just let the gray come out and grow it out and i bleached my hair safely without having anaphylactic shock i was able to do platinum blonde i looked like a hooker <laughs> i looked really weird i had to chop my hair off to like you know very short because i had a lot of dead ends and i let my hair grow out i haven't touched my hair with dye since naturally gray what is it you know why are you hiding it you know as i get older i'm going to be like oh well i should dye my hair now because i'm going to look older i am embracing whatever i look like is what i look like that's what i created for myself it, yeah i put makeup on to hide a lot of scars and things in my eyes i love my makeup though Right? I'm walking my authentic self, but a lot of people are afraid to embrace things that might be their better fit. And unless you make that change to try, I'm viewing the hair as just an example. Like, how do you know you won't look good with gray hair unless you try it?
if it's growing in an excess, embrace the beautiful being that you are. I have, I let it go. I, I said, I'm going to stop. I'm going to make a change. And I actually grew to love it. It makes me unique. There's not many 40 year olds walking around the planet with gray hair like this. <laughs> no one. I don't know too many people. I know them as getting their hair dyed and going to the salon and spending $600 for naturally gray hair, well, gray hair, but it comes out of my head naturally. Like, I, I had a walk in what my authentic self told me to do. I take to my own talk, I'm doing me. Are you doing you? And try, you can always dye it back, you know, even for guys, like, I tell my boyfriend, as soon as you start going gray, let it go. Because you're going to look like the greatest Santa Claus ever after that goes gray. If it goes gray. But embrace the wisdom. Embrace yourself. There's always room for maturity and improvement. But you never know until you make a change if you're going to like it or not. But it's putting that leap of faith in the change that will help strive you to move forward. I had to change a lot in the last couple of years. I had the first step was my hair color. I was really attached to the black and looking like Morticia Adams. Loved it. Loved my black hair. And then I just, this just kept coming out and it looked horrible. And that aged me more than this doesn't age me. I don't think so, at least in my opinion. <laughs> but I had to make a lot of changes to see what fit and what worked. And this is that time of time the energy is collected that we have to start making little changes and then we got to get comfortable with the bigger changes so what are you doing to make some changes in your life because new beginnings are coming a lot of new things are coming into our paradigm are you prepared for the change once i knew as a child my parents were gonna i was gonna be young when my parents passed I, I braced for the emotional states that I might encompass. I embraced having to learn how to go through the lawyer and what their wishes are and all the estate stuff. It's it, like your head explodes. But I, I, as a child knew, I had to take and live every moment as if it was the last. I embraced my parents as much as they I love them to death and I have a better relationship with them now up there than I did down here. But I took each and every day as a blessing. We have to do the same now. We have to embrace what is to come and it's going to play out here. We're going to see a lot of things that are not in our alignment out here. So how are we removing our emotional states so we're not attached to those things? Okay, so it's playing out here. What is my reaction? Still going to live my life. And if some of this stuff that we have to kind of give up, maybe it wasn't for our best. Whether it be food items, whether it be ways of getting around, whatever it have you. We have to embrace that things are going to change. We really don't know what that's going to look like. But when we get used to the idea of making small little changes in our lives, like I'm just giving my hair color as one example, we start embracing change and we don't see it as some fearful nervousness that uh, dreading change. You embrace it because now you see, okay, I made a change and now I'm really liking my change. Change is different for everybody, but what is something you can change in your life 
whether it be the shade of eyeshadow you use if you're a female or maybe trim your beard a little different the little little things you're so minuscule but make some changes in your life and then start embracing more and more and harder change and see how you feel and if you don't feel great because you don't like it or you can't get used to it okay so you revert back because that way was better but we are always in a constant state of flux and change are you embracing it with change <laughs> comes oracle cards because why not I pre-pulled some of them just uh, on the pause that I just took um, so that the video is not stagnant. Grounding. Do you see the picture and how it is to the top of the universe, to the tree that you, to the earth? Ground to both. Ground your energy. Because when you, there's a lot of balance and having faith, it's insane, but this is everything that I was talking about. Let go. Sorry, guys, this camera, I do that. We don't need to see my pores. Hang on. No, 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 pause again. That was Jack. He just woke up. I knew he was sleeping. See? So letting go. Take back your power and thrive. Let all just be. Take back your light. Stop trying so hard and breathe. Letting go does not mean jumping blindly into faith but to release the resistance you hold about a subject so your dreams and de desires can be realized. We have all hung on to a person, place, job, or idea because we think it will give us what we seek. But hanging on is the result of unbalanced thinking. This imbalance has you needing compensation. You create a deficit in you, sorry, you created a deficit by compromising yourself, thinking that was the way towards your dreams. It was your choice to do that. Now it is your choice to let go. Create from love instead of fear. You deserve to have what you want without compromising your truth. You cannot change what has occurred. However, you can change what you do from this moment on. No one has been placed on this earth to make you happy. Just as it is not your responsibility to make anyone else happy. For yourself and everyone else of the idea that we must please others to be loved. You are love and you are loved no matter what happens in your life and in others. Let it go. As all the little kids used to call me Elsa. Round and let go. That's that's what we're needing to do during this eclipse season, and it starts with the full moon. Life's lessons. This is where we need to grow and reflect from. Acknowledge and release for renewal. So release what no longer serves you and your purpose. Let go. Release. Peaceful reflection, spend time reflecting within, doing the inner work. Where do you need to release? What do you need to release? What are you holding on to? 
this this is a big one for people in certain movements. We're holding on on ideologies and agendas that you nor I will foresee. The unknown is having faith in the universe, having faith in source, having faith in yourself that you're going to succeed and your desires will be met. Letting it go. I let go of having the need to be with somebody. And then all of a sudden universe is like, oh, here's this person. It's not going to be perfect, but here he is. Ring at my doorbell. I didn't have to do anything. Okay. That's crazy. But I let go. I release the need, the desire to have, a, have someone in my life. Because either way, I would have to live my life regardless, right? With with somebody or without somebody, you still have to live your life. Find balance. Seek balance between doing and being. Have faith for your own healing. Major. major find it in your heart what is troubling you and tackle it ask those whys and what deeper questions objectively look at the lessons and the experience you have gained what was that person in your life to teach you why did that person die so early in your life what was that teaching you? Your answers may come by just questioning. I don't know which order I want to do because I pulled a bunch of cards. And then there's some cards we're going to do together. There was three of them here. Okay. Okay. Full moon in Scorpio, it's time to release negativity. Anything that's bringing you a negative vibe, let it go. Meditate and contemplate. New moon in Pisces. Meditate and contemplate. So once again, spirit, my higher self, the oversoul, the universe at large is, is coming through to give you guys messages as this is a time to self-reflect. This is a time to go within. This is a time to be still and silent within yourself, finding the answers that you are seeking within. Once we get to that lunar eclipse, and that full moon, a lot of this stuff may come out and rear its ugly head in front of you. So you have no choice but to deal with it. i rather take the time so the universe doesn't throw up in my face the things I need to learn. I, I try and tend to do self-reflection every day. But sometimes you don't have those moments to do those things. So I, I choose to take some time during the day or during the week to do some self-reflection. Doesn't need to be that long. Don't make it a chore. Don't hate it. Do practices that are going to make you happy. Do things that are going to help you. And there's millions of different ways, you know, and not everybody has a bad tub, but you can still light some candles if you if you want to, or incense, and and take a shower and put some essential oil and calm down and relax. Maybe before you go to sleep, contemplate, revise your day. S little little things helps and goes such a far way, and we don't see it in the moment, but when you make things a habit, you're creating change. You see, got to sneak change in there whenever you can. This is a little, uh, one of these decks I like because I'm Gothic. 
but this is really good advice. Enchanter, self-evaluation, awakening, purpose, independence, and confidence. As creepy as this looks, this is exactly the energy that is happening around right now. Self-evaluation. What is it in you that needs change? It could be outwardly appearance. It could be your wardrobe. It could be, you know, just sprucing yourself up a little bit, getting a haircut, doing something different, make a change. You don't have to stick with it. It's just to see if you like it. I've done a lot of changes in my life with my hair, my makeup, and, and how I dress. You know, I do me regardless, but some people don't. So if you if you're one of those people that don't morph and you know, because I'm I call myself a chameleon because I like to blend in, but I also like to be unique. I try a lot of different things. But I'm willing to make those leaps and bounds in myself to make those changes if they if I like it, great. If not, I don't stick to it. But try something different. Try a new color lipstick. For the guys, try trimming your beard differently or or wearing another another kind of hat. I know my boyfriend really likes hats. I'm like, why don't you try different types of hats? He don't like change. The key, inner calling, clarity, resolve, intention, objective. I've been talking about this is the entire show. Inner calling. This is the time to get clarity on what that calling is. And like I said, there is not one and done. We all have a main overall purpose of being here, but there are many purposes we walk into and do. Some of them are short-term, some of them are long-term. We all have multiple purposes here on this planet. But if you need, you know, for myself, trying to find a job that has, you know, I need some new teeth, I need dentures, and um, I need some kind of something because it's very expensive and I need a job that can provide those things. So I just don't have the clarity in where my calling is. So I'm just going and putting myself out there and hoping that somebody sees my call. But be objective. I don't have emotional attachments to anything anymore. That's that's hard to do. Be objective, though. Faith, hope, inspiration, cooperation, rejuvenation, admittance, allow. Faith. Allow. Trust yourself. Trust your intuition. That's a muscle that's hard to get used to. This, these are funny. Pay yourself first. Make yourself your most important financial obligation by setting aside a portion of your income every time you are paid, the sloughing form of self-care ensures that you'll have a savings to invest in your present and your future. So this does not absolutely apply to everybody, um, but make sure that if you are somebody that does work and that you are bringing in income, I would really highly suggest to do that. You know, the gem that you want at the store, the massage you might want to get, or the healing that you want to do, or something that you want to experience, but just don't have the money for it. 
a little bit each day, you know, a little bit, even if it's $5 from your check, will get you where your goal is if you don't spend it. But make sure you're doing something for yourself. Doesn't need to be expensive, but just make sure you're setting aside things for yourself so that you're investing in yourself. That doesn't mean a yacht in the middle of the Caribbean. It means doing things that are going to nourish your soul. Okay, this is a little contradictory, but I'll read this one first. Do the work. It's not enough to dream or pray. You've also got to take the positive action steps that you're being div divinely guided to take. Consistently working on your priorities will make them flourish like a lush flower garden. Do the work. Ask for your needs to be met. God and the angels can come to your aid only if you make a free will choice to be helped. And it begins with asking. It doesn't matter how you ask God for help, but only that you do so. The same holds true with clearly asking other people to assist you. I posted a meme that a lot of people resonated with because a lot of us are self. We don't like to ask for help. I don't like to ask for help because every time I ask for help, I don't receive the help that I need or I think I need. Um, you know, I, 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 I've found that a lot of people aren't, as service to others as they claim to be. Um, there's a lot of instances in my life that I've had to do things by myself and I'm so used to doing things by myself and I, I just don't ask. And then once in a while I'll ask, I don't know how to do something, whether it, you know, something with a tool that I'm, I'm just not good at, you know, we all have things that we're not good at. And I just, ta I tackle, all, you know, I did flooring, I paint the walls, I, I build things myself. Um, but there are things I can't do alone. Like I have a shed that's out there in pieces, but I need help. I tried putting it together myself and there's no way I can. And, you know, when I ask for help, it's like deaf ears, crickets. But what, but I asked upstairs, like, hi, I need some help. We'll see if that call gets answered on the, on, on my shed, but help. What are you doing to have Amish mindset? You know, we all, you know, for those of you go back, you can look at my situation, but I asked for help and you know, the people who, who received, who came to my call, people that were in the same situation as me, the people that were getting food stamps that helped me out when they had extra, um, and they bought me food. People that didn't have enough to buy their own food had food stamps and they bought me food. That's how I survived. So it doesn't mean someone's handing me $50,000 and my life is going to change. Absolutely not. It's what can you give to another person that's going to help them and it doesn't need to be financially. People came through with food for me. It was amazing. People cooked me all kinds of things. I was super grateful. I had a friend donate to me an electric blanket because I didn't have heat over the winter. I had a friend that made me um, a cardigan. I had people make me blankets and crochet really nice, beautiful things I still have. You know, these are things that people knew that I was in need. They had a skill that could help me. And I'm very appreciative to those people that did that for me. What can you do?
I got the big guns coming in right now. Self-worth. Self-worth bestows a sense of confidence, expectation of success, and ability to love. Decide on clear boundaries and limits and firmly decline to let others step over them or manipulate you. You will earn respect when you value yourself. You become open and friendly, slow to take offense and quick to forgive. Remind yourself that you are likable and lovable. Do not let others press your buttons, stand tall and confident. With true self-worth, you radiate a golden aura which enfolds others and makes them feel good too. Ask your angel to step into your aura and guide you. I am confident and worthwhile. Because yes, you are. Archangel Zadigal. Archangel Zadigal will help you to find tolerance and forgiveness. He works on the violet ray of purification and transmutation helping you to release lower vibrations and ascend to a higher way of being. Angel wisdom suggests that you visualize yourself in the violent, violet flame and invoke Archangel Zadigal to help you. Place your troubles and difficult relationships within the flame so that all negativity is transmuted. You are blessed to have drawn this card today for it indicates that you are ready to walk the path of light. I am cleansed within the violet flame. Violet. There's a reason why they made me pull this card for everybody. because we need to purify ourselves in order to move forward and have this big change and the new beginning coming through. When a tower moment happens in our lives, the tower is not something, it could happen to you physically, in emotionally, whatever state you're in, but the tower is really happening to humanity. The ending of one era is just about to end and we're beginning a new era, a new cycle, a new and we don't know what that newness looks like. And a lot of fear is created because we don't know the unknown. You know, I know a lot of people out there that have abilities have been putting out predictions. I'm remote viewing this thing. And this person is saying that, and that person is saying that. And we're grabbing for straws because really what is the unresolved issue in you? You fear the change. You fear the unknown. I know this for my own self. But I've been proving it to myself that I can enact change without knowing. I didn't know where I was moving. I just literally last minute shit picked a spot and here I am. I'm confident about it. I didn't know what to do or how I never lived out of a, a hotel before. I just went in with my intuition and picked a place. All these things were out of left field for me. I never experienced doing a lot of stuff before. So these were new changes and new things I needed to do. I needed to take the leap of faith. I needed to have faith in God and the universe and source, whatever you want to call it, that I was going to be led to the right place. So make that something, you know, I talk personally because I want you guys to know it's not, this is stuff that I've walked through. It's not, you know, some fanciful, you know, story that I read in a book, you know, even though as much as I love my books, this is real life. I walked through it. I felt every emotion. I felt this, I felt afraid. I was scared. I didn't, I was nervous. Um, but I took the faith and I changed. And I've come out of it a better human being. I have walked 
many of us have i'm not the only like i say i am no, no i'm not special i'm just human like everybody else we all walk through all kinds of crazy shit give yourself credit for it stop doubting yourself you can do it we don't know what's going to happen i won't read this is a lot of people ask me to read them i won't read because i don't know what timeline we're bouncing on i don't know where, like everything is so fast right now the energies are crazy i don't know which individual timeline every individual person is picking i know for humanity we're shifting to the positive polarity it's just a matter of when and how that process unfolds is going to be different for everybody I don't want to say something to somebody on an old timeline that I'm picking up, but they're already emerging to a higher one. Be very careful. You know, you got to understand that there's multiple timelines we all choose and there's no wrong one. But at the same time, when someone reads, not to say that you shouldn't get a reading, but if you're asking about future things, you know what my parents told me that kind of steered me in the direction that we're not getting what everybody wants is that I'm going to have to get a job and I'm going to have to work and I'm going to have to have multiple streams of income. It won't just be one. It has to be multiple. So here's one that eventually I hope will be successful if not, that's okay. I'm still going to be here because this is my service to humanity. Selling my artwork is another and then getting a job. They said I'm going to have to work. And I believe them. So let's just be practical. Does that mean I'm getting a, you know, a, a large sum of money? That does. They never said that I would, so... Just food, the food for thought. But if it happens, great. If it doesn't happen, great. I pulled a card I never pulled before, and this deck is relatively new to me, but Pandora's Gift. There's, there is a mystic woman much maligned throughout history whose name means all gifted. Pandora lives within us as our curious nature yearning to conquer chaos, evil, and darkness with the light of knowledge. She is the hopeful voice of our soul that asks the questions and in doing so triggers the process that brings the answers. Sometimes it's through uncomfortable learning that we find our treasure. Pandora reminds us that the process of learning can take us to places that seem like the end of our world, and yet all is not lost. Even now, the light within you is stirring for new revelation, new life, and new adventure. Pandora is all gifted and all giving. Her presence invites you to forego your belief and judgment. Now is the time to surrender the misplaced guilt that you may have brought upon yourself or another. Some terrible happening. It is time to let go of the shame based belief and punishment. This is a belief that you deserve to be brought to task over any perceived imperfection or that your natural human journey somehow renders you inadequate. Pandora frees the soul from such torment. This is her gift. The human journey necessarily involves learning through experience. There is no shame in your learning process. Pandora's presence is a sign of a new time. A new time to swap the notion of inherent shame for the acceptance of inherent divinity. From this moment on, how unstoppable you shall become. Sacred rebellion is happening within your soul as a powerful uprising towards liberation. You are breaking free from the weighty criticisms of the world 
From the power games that bore you senseless and from the insanity of sacrilegious priorities in this world. Dare to disobey anything and everything that is not divine. Pandora is a leader of your soul revolution. She defies the vicious judgments of history and all that has been said about her. She shrugs off misery, despair, and the weight of the world to recognize that she is the bearer of the true and beautiful light of peace, comfort, hope, and reassurance. With her oracle comes the realization that you too are divinely defiant believer in hope who shall cast off the works of anyone who seeks to torment you. As this shift takes place, you shall dare to look within your own being and find the light. You are being put on divine notice from the sacred feminine that there is a talent and ability within you that needs to be acknowledged. There is a worthy seed of something beautiful and necessary within you. If you choose to develop and express this seed step by step, it will become an extraordinary light in your life and in the world. So poke your tongue out at the naysayers and turn your attention to the bright hope within. You are born to strut your soul stuff. This is the energy that we're walking into. And just like Pandora, that we all have negative stories about, that's the story we wrote for these beings. Collectively. We wrote this. Logan, Jason, Decoder Reality tells you, we did this, We it's scripted. He, he believes it's source code that wrote it all. I believe we all joined in on this writing of the script. We chose our characters. We chose the roles we were going to play. Now it's time to take that power and push it towards the positive polarity. Move in your light and empower yourself. Once we all do this, how freaking amazing. It's like Captain is Captain Planet coming together with Dakota rings and like Care Bears come out. <laughs> But I'm serious, like if we all just let go of all the shit and they say it's all source having an experience, I can ignore all the evil doings. Once you understand that each soul chose the manner in which they were going to pass away, that that's the experience their soul needed. This is just a vehicle. And yes, it is painful to see it. We got to detach. Mission spirits are real. Look what that look up mission spirits. They're here to give a greater they like kind of sacrifice themselves for a greater good. I know it's hard to see certain things, but it's all God having an experience through these people, places, and things of the negative and the positive polarity. Once you can get that and understand it, embrace it, understand it, absorb it, we don't need to focus on all the insanity going on in the outside world that's just all of us purging the shit energy that's in us, programmed in us, that needs to go. It's playing outside in a the theater near you, but that's something you don't need to step into the theater to watch. You don't. You're never alone. And when you understand that concept and you can not be distracted by having to watch a you, you know, like the tube and to drown, it's great. These things are great for a relaxing thing, right? I rather stimulate my brain, but not everybody's like that. And that's okay. And I appreciate people that can sit and watch and binge YouTube and binge Netflix. Like I have my limits, you know, I like to read. I like to go outside. I like to take showers and baths and make artwork. I like to do a lot of different things, 
What are the things that you like to do? Be creative. Find your light. But just remember that we wrote their stories. And when we give them power, that's what manifests. Just like Lucifer and Lilith. If you hear other people channeling them, they're ridiculously, amazingly smart. Their words hit home. They say to us, that's the story we created for them. That's not their being. Yeah, they came in as shadows to play a role. They're not like that anymore. Stop giving things stories you know nothing about and what history books, again, lied. Not everything is falsified, but not everything is truth. It's up to you to find it and pluck it out and know what's true for you. But you got to remember, even all the books that I read, like I take everything and go within my heart space. If it doesn't feel right, I, I let, let it go. It's not for me. But just realize I read what I read to have an expansive understanding of other people's perspectives. It's not to disrespect anybody. It's just to understand people's thinking, where they're coming from. going to do the last card for today. Ivory wish fulfilling crow. You can have what you truly want. Such knowledge helps soften and release fear, grasping control and doubt. Have confidence that the universe hears your prayers and is even now leading you into what that you, uh, sorry, there's my dyslexia, leading into that which you seek. You can take sanctuary within your spiritual connection whenever you need stabilization and protection against the fluctuations of external world. No matter what is happening around you, there is a way through the cell, there is a way through to the fulfillment of your potential. Sorry, guys, my brain is cross-haired. The wish-fulfilling tree is a spiritual symbol for the soul, the heart and the divine, bodhivatras, or enlightened sages who guide and protect humanity. It represents a high level of consciousness which is abundant and in harmony with the universe and therefore blissful, free, and generous. This oracle reminds you that you, as you align with spirit, you are aligning with a powerful field of grace, which has protective and strengthening qualities. It is a spiritual tonic with effect in all dimensions and all realms of existence. The price for such sacred empowerment is the surrender of one's ego. This is a lifelong journey for most of us rather than a one-time event. We recondition our mind in the ways of spirit again and again. We recondition our mind in the ways. We disentangle our hearts from societal conditioning based in fear, dominance, greed, victimization of getting one's personal desires met at any cost. We recognize there is a profound difference between taking and receiving. We trust in what is destined for us. Stories about abound in the Hindu tradition of various wish-fulfilling manifestations, from goddesses to trees to cows and gems. When someone sought to possess the wish-fulfilling treasure for their own personal use, they would always be thwarted by higher spiritual intelligence of love, which cannot be controlled or manipulated, but remains as it is, pure and generously giving all that is needed to the rece receptive heart. 
Ivory is an organic material like bone, which makes up the tusks and teeth of numerous animals of land and sea. It is the ability to move through even inhospitable environments successfully. The message of the ivory wish fulfilling crow is that one does not have to dominate or manipulate others to obtain success. It is enough to align with spirit and trust that your sacred inner work is sufficient to attract whatever is needed to manifest your higher purpose. You can obtain what you seek by becoming and radiating rather than through contriving and manipulating. You can recognize what is happening and adjust your sails to new suit the winds rather than trying to change the ways of nature. This oracle guides you to trust that you will reach your destination even when there are forces beyond your control. You don't need to be more powerful than oppressive forces to overcome them. In connection with your heart temple of spirit, you will be empowered to proceed your path with abundance, wisdom, and joy. Go within. Trust yourself. And this is a process. This doesn't happen overnight. This, these things take time and we need to start doing them. And I know a lot of people have been starting and I'm so proud of each and every one of you. The little leaps and bounds each and every day, pulling affirmation cards, looking in the mirror, saying, I love you. Even though sometimes you might not mean it, it's still helping you get into a habit of change, changing your perception of self. If a door is not opening for you, this has happened my whole life. I just find another door that's cracked and I go through it and see if it's for me. Life is a journey and we're all going through it together. So start now because things are going to get crazy and outside stuff is just don't pay attention to it. Go within and do what you need to do on your day to day. When you're secure in yourself, you're going to be secure in knowing that your universe will take care of you and that you have it. You got this. You could do this for yourself. Empower yourself, please. I can't be by myself here. I need, I need it. We need, we need to come together. All of us. Together. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Just ranting, getting things off my chest. Got some Oracle cards in. So Sending each and every one of you love, light, compassion, grace, protection, and shielding energy. Please be safe, be seen. And my, my prayers and my heart goes out to everybody affected in the tornadoes that have happened through Texas all the way through Ohio last night. It was very painful to see some of those pictures and my heart and my prayers of energy and healing and strength are going to everybody affected there in the diff multiple states were affected. Um, I'm gonna get something to eat and maybe take a little nap poop because I'm tired. So guys, I hope to see you on the next one. Thank you so much for all the new subscribers. Thank you for watching me. I appreciate it. Please like, share, and subscribe if you have yet to do so. Every little bit helps on this mindset and until the next one, guys, great day. Bye for now.